Michael, out of all the guests that we've had on this show, you are probably the most engaged with your audience, so we're gonna give the fans a little bit more and go even deeper into some of your photos and videos that you posted. Okay. You ready? Let's do it. <laughs> First one. Big Mike Ooh, right here, man. Oh boy, that's large Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Stanley Cup, you're looking like you could've been on the roster right there. Wow. I, Maybe it, backup goalie? It's funny, uh, Don LaGreca looked at that and he goes, you know, not many people in the world actually get way better looking as they get older. He goes, you were a wreck then. But I must have been like 260, 270 pounds. That was obviously 94. Rangers brought the cup in and that was before they actually said you can't touch the cup. So I just lifted it up and uh, yeah, I'm living large right there. Hey man, but you look good. You look like you could have been a backup goalie. Maybe Nikolai Hobby Bowling, right? I think I look like I could have been a backup <laughs> center in football. <laughs> Big fat neck. So next post, speaking of necks, you got the nice turtleneck going, matching with Mark Messier. Ranger great, was this plan? No, it wasn't planned. Uh, he was coming in and I remember I put the turtleneck on and the leather jacket and Peter Rosenberg you know, just gave me grief. He said, oh, that's so not, so not cool. Turtlenecks aren't in. And I said, you're telling me what's not in. And then Messier walks in, who's like the epitome of cool. Mm -hmm. And he had on almost the same outfit, except that his jacket was brown and mine was black. And I knew I nailed it. <laughs> did you get a chance to show him this photo? No, I did not. <laughs> I did not. So we have seen you in the Rangers gear and the helmet. Oh, where'd you get that picture? We just I, we just got to know a little bit more about this one right here. Well, this is on Twitter. Yeah, I am. Um, Don and I, <laughs> before Peter joined the show, we would have football bets every year, and I lost the bet. And my bet was to go to a Ranger game in full Ranger uniform. I had full Ranger pants on too, and I had to sit in the stands, and people were taking pictures with me, and I looked like a complete jerk. But uh, the cool part was I was sitting there, just feeling like awful. And out of the blue, James Dolan, walk, he never walks through the stands at the garden, walked right down, sat on the steps next to me and was just talking to me because, you know, I was bringing such attention wow. to myself, which, you know, I'm shy. Did he have any idea, <laughs> did, did he have any idea who you were? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, well, he, he, he just sat down and go, why are you dressed like that? <laughs> I mean, it was like the full, I had gloves and everything. I, that's what you do when you lose a bet, right? Yeah, hey, and a good Halloween costume too, right? Absolutely. Keep it in the back yeah, pocket. You know how big that helmet was? <laughs> <laughs> What's your wife? She looks great in the Rangers colors too. Here she is in a hockey socket. This was a gift to her? Uh, the Rangers sent that, and obviously I wasn't gonna wear it. Um, and she just put it on, and you know, the, the thing with Jody, she, she looks good in everything she wears, so. She actually pulled that off pretty good, but uh, yeah, she looks uh, she looks pretty good. That yeah, that's in our house. Did you ever want to get into hockey broadcast? You know what? I, I, about it? I don't know hockey at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, thank God Don is there on the radio show. I, I don't know hockey at all. I mean, I try, and it's fun to go to live, but I mean, you you've got to really push me to just watch it on TV. I just don't get it. I don't get it. It's like soccer on ice. So speaking of Don. <laughs> What is he wearing in this photo? <laughs> What's he's, what he's wearing is something unfortunate. It's just, a, I mean, we spent like three days just killing him on the show about this. I mean, the horse looks great. Don looks awful. I mean, he just, <laughs> I don't even know what to say without really insulting him, but that it's two sizes too small. The helmet looks like, looks like an eraser. I mean, it just, <laughs> I mean, what do you think? It's dreadful. Was this a lost bet? No, he did this for charity. He'd take oh. part in a harness race at the Meadowlands all the time. And I said, okay. you should, you're doing something nice for somebody and then you ended up looking like that? That's a lose-lose. <laughs> uh, all right, here you are. So you, you love baseball so much that you not only broadcast the games, but when you have an opportunity to go watch a game, you're right there, man. Well, this was in Cleveland and we had a, a Saturday off. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked Ben uh, Tublowitz of the Yankees if, if, if he had any tickets. I didn't want to sit in the press box. And so he gave us these great tickets, like three rows from the, the dugout. And I went with Mike Medvin and, and Luke Miller, and we had a great time. We really did have a good time. It was a great day. And uh, you know, I love the little hot dog dancing up there. So yeah. all good. Different all good. perspective. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, when you sit there, when, when, when you're doing the games, it, it, you know, you're working. Mm -hmm. There's pressure on you. You want to make it enjoyable for other people, but here, you realize why you fell in love with the game mm -hmm. in the first place. So I thought it was great. So did you grab a beer, popcorn, hot dog? I had a beer. I had, uh, good man, good you know, man. I, had, I had peanuts because, you know, I try to keep low carb. <laughs> and I had, you know, Nickel of Ultra, more low carb. But uh, yeah, and uh, the other guys had some beers as well. So we had a good time. So you don't want to go back to Stanley Cup Mike at all? <laughs> no, I, I, if I want carbon, 
<laughs> you'd be you'd have Stanley Cup Mike in about a year. <laughs> <laughs> Next, so we're talking about broadcasting. This was a very, very special moment for you. An amazing photo that was captured too of yourself and your kids inside the booth. This is one of my favorite pictures. I actually get choked up looking at it. They were sitting on my lap and um, I was doing the play by play and they were they were cool, they were keeping quiet, and somebody hit a home run. So I did the whole see ya. And when I said it, that was their reaction. They turned around immediately when I said see ya because they heard heard it on TV. And just the joy on their faces and Charlie and Callie and uh, our stage manager, Audrey DeWeiss, snapped that. And uh, Jody took that picture and blew it up and it's in my office at home. It's like one of my favorite pictures of all time. Oh, amazing. Got the chills. Look at, look at his face. It. So amazing. Yeah. Usually that's a pretty... Uh, common question that I'll ask, is this photo framed in your house? And this one actually is. It's blown up and framed and Jody did, you know, I'm, I'm a low life. I don't know how to do stuff like that, but she actually put it in a beautiful frame. It's matted. It's it's one of my favorite things in my office. Amazing. So they even put the headset on at one point too. It's broadcasting in their future. They look like naturals. You know what? <laughs> Charlie does a really good um, see ya. Uh, he actually, when I, when I was, had the surgery, he was the one who was doing the play by play in the house. On the track. At the wall, see ya at two in the morning, my maybe. Callie has told me many times that she wants to be famous, but she just doesn't know how to become famous. So I think she kind of likes it when the cameras are on. Charlie's a little bit, <laughs> a little bit more shy, but uh, Callie definitely has some hand on her for sure. <laughs> and that was actually. Uh, I was at the Beach Bash for the radio show, and I couldn't talk that day. Mm. So I just went there to you know, shake hands with fans and all, and uh, they were sitting on my lap, and uh, they were enjoying it. So you had some great fill-ins. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And maybe it could be like the uh, you know, the Albert family, or the Buck family, or the, uh, the Brenneman family. Who knows? Yeah, man, you never know. You never know. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. <laughs> Let's just swipe by that. <laughs> <laughs> so we started the show talking about how you engage with your fans all the time. And this photo, you had actually asked your fans, who's got the bigger head, you or Mr. Met? Well, I think Mr. <laughs> Met wins by just a little bit, but the one thing I wanna make very clear to your audience, I don't have a big head, I have a long face. <laughs> it's a completely different animal. I tell this to O'Neill all the time. Now, Mr. Met has a really big head. I have a really long head, so I have almost like a Mr. Ed head. <laughs> So once you got Instagram, you had posted this photo. Mm -hmm. And then the next one, you had to repost this photo because again, you even made a joke about the size of your head. Mm -hmm. Now you can see the top of my large noggin still learning the gram. So you really do kind of like... You gotta embrace it, you know? <laughs> yeah. if, if it's a flaw, embrace it. If you try to hide it, it's just gonna be accentuated. So I think I take the edge off of people because that's, when you read the mentions, and I don't read the mentions that much, uh -huh. It's always about head. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, and, and that, you're, you're good. That was the first one of the first pictures I posted on Instagram, and I didn't know that you could frame it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm new to this. I think Meredith put me on Instagram. Uh -huh. That's right, up yeah. in Boston. Yeah, and I still don't know how, like, if you really want to, like, I, I'll post individually on Twitter and Instagram, because you have to be on Facebook uh -huh. in order to have it, you know, just automatic, and I'm not on Facebook. Mm -hmm because the people that I don't know from high school, I don't want to know mm -hmm. them, so I don't want to be on Facebook. <laughs> so I, I actually post them individually on Instagram and Twitter. Shoot, well shout out to Meredith and Rock. It's also a great follow on Twitter, great Instagram, follow. Facebook. She set them up and that's actually one of the reasons or one of the ways that we're getting all this awesome content, <laughs> which this one right here, this is off your Beautiful Twitter. feet, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was hoping maybe show the dad bod. <laughs> no, no, you know, I don't do anything I've seen on, uh, on, on Instagram. This was, this was just, uh, uh, I'll tell you, the five weeks that I was out with the surgery, there was a long time I was just like feeling sorry for myself. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, people go, oh, you're lying by the pool. How awful could that be? It was terrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't a vacation because you're thinking about, you know, your professional mortality and whether you'd be able to talk again. And I remember Phil Jackson took a picture like this mm -hmm. after he got fired. And I said, let me channel some Phil Jackson here. And I just took a picture <laughs> of my feet. And, and I think that the caption on that was, I'd still rather be working. At any other given time, this has got to be one of the most relaxing things for you to do, right? In the backyard? It is, it is. And, and the kids were in camp then, so it was, you know, it was really relaxing because when the kids are out there, <laughs> I'm, I'm just watching them. You don't, you know, you want to make sure they're okay. And, uh -huh. you know, Charlie still doesn't swim great. Callie's like a fish, but 
this is relaxing when it's just me out there and you know obviously my little unicorn float. That's right. <laughs> I was gonna say I think I see four floats out there. One, two, three, four. Yeah. So that means one for each of you. So which one is yours? I think uh, the big <laughs> pink one. That's that's the one that really works for me. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> All right, so this is a great photo too. Beautiful, that's, that's on like my album cover, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where was this? That was like a, a, a birthday gift from Jody to me. And uh, I don't like Napa, but mm -hmm. Jody gave herself a gift essentially. <laughs> yeah. So this Smart was lady. like, yeah, this was like, I think um, during Super Bowl week and we were doing the radio show out there. So she came out and uh, we went to Napa. And uh, I really like that picture. I think it's pretty cool. I, I'm not a cool guy, but that's a pretty cool look. Yeah, you look like a model. You're cool, yeah. Look, yeah, right. yeah it looks you. GQ, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you do have some acting experience. That's big, that's big. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised I, I got bypassed for an Oscar nomination, but uh, that was my coach, Coach Romy role in Grown Ups 2. Uh, Adam Sandler was on center stage, and I just came right out and asked him, how about a role in one of your movies? Because he does put people in his movies uh -huh. all the time. And I just thought he forgot. And like, uh, I don't know, six months later, he called my house. I said, well, yeah, listen, uh, I can't do an imitation. I wrote, I wrote something for you. And I, I remember I drove to Boston where they were doing it. And uh, he couldn't have been greater. And they treated me like I was a star of the movie. They all came into the trailer and they're talking Yankees and stuff like that. And he had lines for me and everything. And that was an unbelievably, uh, fun experience and I'll tell you what people always ask out when you meet famous people how they are he's the best Sandler is like he's just so down to earth and so real and keeps his word and you know, it's hard not to like him and he stopped by the booth a couple times too to by the, just to say hi I didn't even know he was at the ballpark and he stopped by and he said hi and uh, you know the center stage I did with it was one of the favorite ones he's just a real dude you know a lot of people that are famous or are actors it's kind of a veneer. Not him, that's him. That's the kid that grew up in, uh, you know, I guess Long Island. Amazing. And became like really filthy rich. Mm. When I was watching the movie at the time and then you had popped up on the big screen and it's almost like, oh, hey, you're like, okay. Yeah. It so was, that's, that's a cool thing to have in, uh, have in the history books for you. I thought it was brilliant too. Do you think so? <laughs> I think I nailed every line. I think you can definitely be in another movie in the future. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I've got that on my IMDb. <laughs> Uh, all right, so final photo. We'd uh, love to I'm pull up some now. throwbacks. Okay. You got to tell us a little bit more about this look. <laughs> Last school picture day. Uh, I think it was maybe third or fourth grade. That's a that's a big mop, man. Look at that hair. I wish I had it now. But uh, yeah, I, I, as Don McGregor said, I've aged pretty well because <laughs> I was one ugly looking kid. Look at that, man. I, I, I used to call it, you're too young for this, <laughs> but remember the Partridge family? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Danny Bonaducci. Twin that up. That's Danny Bonaducci. Danny it's, Bonaducci. It's not great. Man, I'm just Look realizing. at that hair though. You couldn't get your hand through that. <laughs> so we see all your fun videos and, and photos that you post. What would you say in your opinion is your favorite part about social media, whether Twitter, Instagram? You know what? I, I used to I used to look at it as an adversary. I really did. You know, like for people to dive into the cesspool and attack. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, it's really a useful tool and you can see what people are feeling and if you're doing things that are annoying people and you might not even think it's annoying people, it's good feedback, it really is. I mean, you want feedback from your bosses, but you're also trying to, to make the people that are watching or listening happy. Mm -hmm. So I'm not looking to like butt heads with people. And I, I tell you what, Matthew, in the last last three years, Twitter and, and Instagram has been all positive for me. Mm -hmm. Even, there's, there's not as much negative stuff, I don't know, because I'm not sending out the negative vibes. I used to go back at people who said something nasty, and now I just, you know, okay, that's their feeling, whatever. And I look at, and also for Twitter, anybody that's in this business that fights me on Twitter, mm -hmm. they're not getting information in real time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is information in real time. If you follow the right people, you're getting breaking news. I, it's invaluable for me on the radio show. I stay off of it during the game. I might look at it, you know, during between mm -hmm. innings when I'm off the air, but it's great. It really is, it's great interaction with fans and it's also, it tells you what they're thinking. I think that's important. You can't ignore your audience. I mean, those are the people that, that pay your salary. I know that sounds cliche, but those are the people that pay your salary. And you really do a great job with filling those fans in with all the original content that you put out. Uh, in my opinion, it's actually very impressive because a lot of people usually just send out text for tweets or whatever it may be, but right. you're actually giving visuals for people to see and get to know you better. I, I really think, and I, I used to feel this way growing up a Yankee fan. I felt like Phil Rizzuto and Frank Messer and Bill White 
We're almost part of my family. I always say there were four male voices heard in my house, my dad and those three guys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just want to let them in. You know, sometimes I never want to overexpose my kids. I'm not looking to make my kids famous, but I want them to be part of the family. I mean, I'm part of their family 150 games a year. And then on the radio, almost, you know, every weekday during the year. So I just want them to feel like they're part of it. So, and this is a, this is a great forum to do that. All right, well, now it's the time for the plug. What do you have to offer and why should people follow you? All right, here's the deal, man. You're gonna know about me, you're gonna know what I feel, you're gonna get promos on the radio show, you're gonna know when the games are starting, you're gonna know who I'm working with, and you'll get a little shot of, you know, Callie and Charlie, you know, growing up, and uh, and Jody, and every time I post a picture of Jody, Matthew, every time. Oh, you're over your skis. How'd you score that? Yeah. So. How did you, by the way? You know, it's the personality. That's that's the key. That's why you have a beautiful wife. <laughs> thank you, thank you, man. I guess we're both doing something right Absolutely. then. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you so much, and uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to more more posts and shooting this guy follow. It's got good stuff. <laughs>